What's the word, y'all? Now, if you're anything like me, you remind your own business. Maybe you're watching the Bulls win against the Knicks, maybe playing some video games, and you got a notification that said Memphis 152, OKC 79. Let me do the math for you. OKC just lost by 73 points in an NBA game. These are the type of numbers you see in high school when Team A got eight players going D1 and Team B just picked up a basketball. You don't see stuff like this in the NBA ever. This is the biggest win in the history. You know what? No, it's not. It is the biggest loss in the history of basketball because it's more of an indication of OKC than it is of the Memphis Grizzlies. 73 points? Draymond Green made a tweet that was like, somebody got to get fined for this. Sam Presti got pick equity for 12 sixth graders right now, but have current players that can't prevent them from losing by 70 plus. Now, OKC was out of Shea Gears Alexander, Josh Giddy, Derek Favors. These are players that are rotational players for them, and, and they weren't here to help them. They're injured. They're just, they're just not there. But even with all that said, if you call yourself an NBA organization, you should never lose by 73. Like, I like a lot of the players in OKC, man. Shea is one of my favorite players in the league. Lou Dort has been a surprising player. But you can't lose by 73 and not get clowned for. So I am uh, putting myself through torture today. Yep, best believe it. This game is going on. So is the Bulls game. So I was watching the Bulls blow an 18-point lead, but close it out. Shout out to them. I have decided to watch every single second of this game. Because you probably saw the notification and asked yourself, how the hell did a team just lose by 73? And I'm about to find out. This is why I love the Kenny For Real channel, though. Because I can just do what I want. Three people might enjoy this video. I don't really care. I just want to have some fun. Or maybe not. Watching a team lose by 73 probably won't be fun. But I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna try to make the best out of it. Leave a like, subscribe. And let's just, let's go watch a team lose by 73 points. I'm just going to say I'm risking a lot by doing this video. And if um, the video gets taken down or the channel gets taken down, it was worth it for content. I don't want to get too disrespectful in this one, right? Because I'm sure everybody on this OKC Thunder team that played tonight are good guys. But immediately when I saw the starting lineup, I kind of knew what the heck was going on. Because yeah, the Grizzlies give up a lot of points. Not tonight, they not. Okay, Big Lou. There it is. Ludor has been hooping recently, man. He had a stretch where he was putting up like 20 plus points on five or six games in a row. We knew that he was going to come out here and hoop at least a little bit. Freeze frame this one. Because this is the last time they about to be within one point. <laughs> this is the last time they about to be even this close. Okay, double screen for man to get open. All right, they rescreen. Oh, step back, Trey, man. He almost airballed it. Hey, for a game that ended up being a 73 point like win. Memphis look dry as ever in these first five minutes, bro. A lot of missed shots, some turnovers. Like, if, if you were to watch this first six minutes, you would not have thought this game ended up with the biggest blowout in the history of basketball. Bro, Jaron Jackson Jr. shot. It just reminds me of, like, a 10-year-old, bro. It goes in, so you can't complain about it, obviously. But it don't look like he's a seven-foot dude shooting a three. It's just like he, he looks like a kid sometimes. So let's say I didn't watch a single game of basketball in my life. And there's a contest going on that four of these players are not NBA players and one of them is. Lou Dort is the obvious player that looks like an NBA player. The rest of these dudes now, I'm sure they're going to have good NBA careers once it's all said and done. But based on this, if this is my only sample size, <laughs> Lou Dort is the only person that looks like he belongs to be in the NBA. Like I guarantee if I went to 90% of NBA fans and showed them a picture of Gabriel Deck and said, who he play for? They would not know. Or a picture of Paul Watson Jr., they would not know. Oh, who is that? I don't know the dude on Memphis. Who was the guy? Aldama. Aldama. Okay. <laughs> they just got three wide open looks at the rim and missed them all, bro. This is so hard to watch. And I still got three more quarters after this. I'm legit done. Like, I don't even want to watch the rest. They just had three wide open looks at the rim and bricked every single one of them. Now, if they give up a bucket right here. If they give a bucket right here, uh-huh. Brandon Clark, mid-range jump shot. He almost airballed. Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm saying. You got to be better than that. Oh, I guess you don't got to be better than that. We know that you, you won by 73, and they just airballed. Okay. We're going into the second quarter. It's bad. Now, I'm just very curious to hear what the commentators are saying once the lead is at, like, 45-50. Like, what are you talking about at that point? You can't be talking about X and O's and giving play-by-play. -play. There's no way. 
There's nobody investing no more. You got to be just having fun out there. At least that's what the Bulls commentators used to do when we were down by 25 early in the game. Point Poku's kind of fun, though. I give him that. He's found an open tie Jerome. And then Tim dunked it. Okay. Hey, Poku should get more minutes. Now he 100 pounds, but that was a fun possession. Oh, my God. The Anthony Melton just ended two people's lives. Okay, never mind. Forget Poku's dunk. The Anthony Melton just did that. They started to run a zone. Um, and that might have been the worst thing they could have possibly done. Because because Memphis has shooters. Yeah. They put that zone in, and it's just been three after three after three. They got to get out of that. Yep, they got shooters. Uh, they got, The boys are just shooting them out the zone. Coach Mark D, whose name I still don't know how to pronounce. Uh, I don't know why he thought that was a good idea. Ain't no way. Yep, that's, if I counted it right, four straight possessions that ended in the three. Since they put that zone in. And a game that looked bad, but not terrible, just quickly turned into almost a 30-point game in the first half. Uh, so this is tor this is torture. This re I don't know why I thought to myself, you know it would be a good video idea? Watch a team lose by 73. You know, Caruso steals coming over from the Lakers, leading the NBA in steals with Chicago. Caruso love. quite a surprise. And so is the Bulls team. Yeah, but Bulls love. Um, they're giving them different looks. Xavier Tillman kick out, open three for De'Anthony Melton. I kind of expected that to go in because that's... <laughs> so it, at first it, at first it was like a 2-3 zone and then they were getting shot out from like the wings. And now it's a 3-2 zone so they can stop the perimeter shooting. And De'Anthony Melton is like, I don't care. I'm still going to find the one opening I got and hit the three. When you go into a half like this down by 30 plus points, all you ask for your team is to try to make it respectable. Play with some heart. Obviously, we know the outcome of this game. But look at the score right now. They doubled these boys' points in the first half. They're shooting 24% at halftime. 24% from the field. Jaron Jackson Jr., top of the key. I'm <laughs> that, that little kid jump shot. Oh, he calling up on people. Oh, man. <sighs> like I said, once you're going to a half down by 30, the only thing you want from your team it's to show some heart. They ain't showing. <laughs> they ain't showing none of that. No way. Jaron just pulled from the logo. That's somebody's big man. That's that's a that's a power forward center. Almost seven foot. He just pulled from the logo and just hit it like it was nothing. What Taylor Jenkins noticed is that nobody on this team can shoot, so he put in his own zone. Why would he need the overworking man if nobody can hit a jump shot anyway? And look, the, they're just getting deflections. They're doing everything. Tyus Jones, all defensive team, give it to him. DeAnthony Melton, top of the key. What you going to do? Dish it off to Steven Adams for an easy layup. Jeez, we're almost at the 50-point mark. Why am I here right now? Now, I know y'all saw that video of that high school game where they were dapping each other up after the game and a dude just hit him with a hook or something. Somebody on OKC got to fight, bro. I can't lose by 73 and just go out, just go to the locker room. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm I'm a I'm a sore loser in that case, bro. You're not about to beat me by almost 80 and, and be okay. There's the 50 piece. We might have already been there, and I'm just bad at math. This is easy 50. I can do this mathematics right here. That is a 50 point lead at the moment. And I'm still here. I'm a, hey, I told you I watched it every single minute of this game. I, I already know what's gonna happen, and I'm seeing the worst basketball of my life. He just hit all backboard on the open three. Yeah, oh yeah, this is what I'm here for. They're done. This game is over, and the commentators are talking about ducks right now. Is it worth a flight out? It's a lot to ask to watch the ducks. Well, you gotta, you, you got, you gotta go to the Sax Museum. You gotta, you gotta to be that. interesting. You, you gotta do something because obviously the people at home that are still chugging in and watching this game, all three of them, still want to be entertained in one way or another. And talking about ducks is that. The museum actually is the hotel. They basically, the spot where Martin Luther King was assassinated at the Lorraine is now the actual museum structure itself the original oh that's kind of cool you recommend uh, going and visit. they turned that into a museum that's that's baseball that's movement right there. they didn't know, they know that you, you wanna... Ty, Ty Jerome is really out there trying and I respect that him Mike Muscala are the only people at least of this group of five that look like they're actually giving effort on, on both sides did you ever go after a guy did I ever for a little go? payback uh, intentionally will you hold this against me 
<laughs> don't worry, I got my earmuffs on. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm just talking. I don't know who the commentators are for OKC, but yes, they're I making do. this an OK experience. Honestly, but like I said, Please. it's Michael Cage. I had no idea. So I had no idea Michael, Michael Cage, Cage was the commentator yeah. here. You know, oh, you that makes Back sense because he played for the Supersonics, who are now the Thunder. Oh my God, it's coming together. Michael Cage, by the way. One of the greatest heads of hair back in his heyday. We talk about a Jerry Curl out of this world, and he was getting hella rebounds while flicking, flicking Jerry Curl juice on his opponents. Like he was doing that back in the day. This is the moment that made me want to make this video. Right now, they're showing on the screen the player of the game. When you lose by 73, there is no player of the game. I'm sorry. There's no silver linings. There's no, oh, this player might have looked nice. You lose by 73. It's a wrap, bro. That ad going to have to wait till next game. Run that ad two times next game. You don't get one tonight. Shout out to Memphis for being um, good Samaritans. They ran out the shot clock the last couple possessions because they saw what it was at, and they was like, we don't want to <laughs> we don't want to make it even worse. All right, that's... um. That was the worst basketball viewing experience of my life. I've watched a ton of basketball in these 25 years. That was the worst experience I've ever had. Um, Silver Lighting, Michael Cage and his other commentator, whose name I don't know, made it somewhat, you know, viable with their commentary, but it's just the basketball side was god-awful. Why did I do this? Because of content. Content is king. And I just went through 48 minutes of the worst basketball performance in the history of basketball. But even after all of that said, I'm gonna tell you once again to enjoy basketball, y'all.